So a dry toilet doesn't seem to be a universal option to cut the wastage of nutrients and water. So they have explained to me the system. Personally, I have strong reservations. Um, to tell me to pick up the bucket and throw it away myself. Personally, I have reservations. To take a bucket full of this stuff, that appalls me. A dry toilet is not the only technology for eco-sanitation. Ahmed and Latifa will have to look at alternatives. For example, reusing rainwater. In various villages in southern Tunisia, people have collected rainwater in private cisterns since Roman times. This rainwater is often used for drinking, but also has other uses in the house. Closer to home, Latifa and Ahmed have found a modern household in Tunis where a man is using his roof to collect rainwater for washing dishes, laundry, irrigating his garden and toilet flushing. In their search for alternatives, Ahmed and Latifa have also looked at experiments in other North African countries. In Morocco, Professor Bouchaib El Hamouri uses treated wastewater from showers as an alternative for flushing toilets. Here is our grey water treatment system. Uh, grey water is collected from the uh, AXA club and they have a, a fitness room which receives something like 25 people at each uh, session and we're collecting the shower water and pumping it to here to be then recycled for toilet flushing. Grey water is wastewater that comes from the kitchen and bathroom but not from the toilet. The grey water from the showers in Morocco is first cleaned using a reed bed and sand filter. Then it is collected in a reservoir to be disinfected by pumping it through a UV filter. From the reservoir, water is pumped to this unit here, which is a UV light disinfection. And the system is very simple, actually. You have uh, water flowing through this Teflon tube, and it's surrounded by four UV uh, generating lamps and bacteria are killed. The disinfected water from the showers is then pumped to four experimental toilets. Clean drinking water is still available in these toilets for washing, but also in case the grey water runs out. Uh, you may see here two entrances. This one is to control the grey water, and this one is to control the potable water. And the main uh, important thing is that Disinfected, treated grey water never comes in touch with the entrance of, of the pipe of the uh, potable water. And this is very important. Uh, this is a particular grey water, it's shower grey water, but it's easy to treat it in a system like this. Back in Tunisia, Encouraged by the success of the Moroccan experiment, Ahmed and Latifa established their own experiment at a girls' university dormitory near their office. Here at the university dormitory, we have a communal place for toilets and for showers. This allows us to treat three types of water on this site. The grey water that comes from the showers, the black water that comes from the toilets, and the rainwater that we collect from the roof. Our objective of this project is to install a shower unit with treated rainwater supply. We have also installed the shower with equipment to reduce the water consumption and maximize the water efficiency. The shower water is then treated with a special bioreactor unit and used for flushing toilets. Ahmed and Latifa have just ordered one of these units from Europe. The toilet water is cleaned using a constructed wetland. So it will be used three times and moreover at the last stage 
We use all the nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus in the wastewater to irrigate this garden. The grey water treatment unit arrives at the office. Now Ahmed and Latifa can finish building their eco-sanitation system. The experiment is unique in Tunisia. Like this, there is efficient use of water and it is beneficial for the environment. An excellent project. There is some concern about using rainwater for the showers, but if it is clear that there is no danger to human health at all, I will personally volunteer to cooperate in using the shower water to flush the toilets and the toilet water for the irrigation. I have no reservations. Bouchaib in Morocco is treating black water for irrigating food crops. It's valuable for agriculture, especially because it contains urine. Urine is not only sterile, it contains 70% of all the nutrients in our waste. Back in Tunisia, Ahmed has ordered waterless urinals from Hanover in Germany. There, waterless urinals are widely used in schools. The urinals use no water for flushing. You just do your business and then you will go away. There's no water coming out of the toilet and of the urinal. So it's quite okay. You don't really feel a difference between usual urinals and ours, but there is a difference and that's important. A special membrane reduces the smell. Ahmed plans to use them in the primary school in Shorfesh, a village not far from Tunis. These are the typical urinals of a primary school, and this school has been chosen by the Zero M project to conduct an experiment of this new approach. In Shorfesh, you'll see that the urine is collected separately. As you know, urine contains a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus. We can use it directly to fertilize agricultural fields. But Ahmed still hasn't given up on the dry toilet. Whilst in Shorfesh, he tries once more to introduce it. Ahmed visits a sheep farmer, Mohammed bin Ali, who lives close to the school. <laughs> Mohammed is not connected to a sewage system, therefore he built a cesspit to collect waste. He is very careful using water. <laughs> So, when someone uses the toilet, he washes himself and then fills a bucket and pours it onto the toilet. This saves water. The water from the washing machine we collect in a barrel and use it to wash the floors. Also, I don't take a shower directly, but use a bucket to wash. I use only one bucket to save both water and money, because the water bill is high, so we have to save our water. Mohammed's household would be an excellent candidate to use the first modern dry toilet in Tunisia. So Ahmed and Latifa show him the dry toilet and explain how to use it. Mohammed is full of questions, obviously very interested. This is much better. All the citizens can follow me and try it themselves. People will benefit from this and all the nutrients will be of benefit for them. If we collect our waste and reuse it on the land, the people and farmers who have land here in the neighborhood will benefit. It'll make the land much stronger, you see.
So finally, Ahmed and Latifa found someone willing to use a dry toilet. It means Shofesh will be the first Tunisian village to use modern dry toilets to solve the lack of sanitation, cut water consumption and reuse human waste. Small beginnings. Is there a future for eco-sanitation? When we're talking about environmental protection, I think the first step is to think about what, where are going my feces and my urine. I think when we, the people are thinking about that, then we will have we are on, the, on the right track. It's all much better. <laughs> more about this film or to comment visit tv.org slash earthreport.